Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chaitali Ba from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe based out of Cyprus. And ADU is continuing with its countdown to the 89th Indian Air Force Day. As the Indian Air Force formidable inventory keeps on growing, so does its need for more. And in this wish list is the procurement of the 114 MRCA under Make in India. And today we have Mike Kelly, Vice President India Lockheed Martin Aeronautics Strategy and Business Development, and Brett Medlin, F-21 India Campaign Lead, to take us a walkthrough on Lockheed Martin's F-21, which is one of the contenders. I welcome you both on behalf of ADU to this chat room. And now I request our editor, Sangeeta Saxena, to take the discussion forward. Hi, Mike, and hi, Brett. Good morning to both of you there. It's a good evening in Delhi. And uh, this is just wonderful to have both of you here. And we've been waiting for it for quite some time, you know, now. We will be waiting for just the right opportunity and we got it. Courtesy the Indian Air Force. Uh, Mike, you know, uh, you have been here for a very long time. And Brett also for some time now. I just wanted to begin with, uh, you know, F-21, yes. And there is a quarter in uh, India which feels that F-21 is an old wine in a new bottle. Now, I would like you to justify it. Well, good evening. Thank you for having us. I'll, I'll take that question happily. Um, we, we hear uh, that as well, uh, but I would like to reiterate that the F-21 truly is different inside and out. It's uniquely configured to meet the Indian Air Force's uh, requirements, uh, technically, uh, operationally, as, as well as from um, a, a low cost, uh, life, low life cycle cost, as well as um, make an India perspective. From the technical standpoint, it is, like I said, truly different inside and out. It has a fifth generation um, active electronically scanned array radar leveraged from both the F-35 as well as the F-22 platforms. It has triple missile launcher adapters, which allows it to carry up to 40% more air-to-air -air firing power compared to legacy platforms. So 10 air-to-air -air missiles in total. It has an advanced tar targeting pod, pod, excuse me, IRS uh, infrared search and track uh, coupled with the radar, um, which allows the ability to um, to have a first shot or first look uh, detection, first and first shot and first kill in the in the kill chain. Um, it's it truly is um, a, you know a different a different animal, and it's it's uh, specifically configured for India per the requirements as we know them today. Uh, we're yet to receive a formal RFP from the Indian Air Force, um, but once once we do, as that acquisition formally progresses, and should those requirements change, we do remain committed to meeting and or exceeding all of Indian Air Force's requirements. Uh, yesterday, when we were at the annual press conference of the chief, the Indian Air Force chief, and uh, he said, you know, that the RFIs have all come and we are in the process, uh, you know, trying to organize the next stage, which means that you will very, uh, you know, shortly hear from them. Does it mean that, uh, you know, my, my understanding, does it mean that uh, you will, uh, once you get the RFPs and uh, you get a timeline to respond to them, uh, how, how do you plan to tell them that this is what we will do, this is where we will do, and this is how we have planned? Because it's Make in India, it's a pet project of the government of India. So have you decided in all the parameters of production in India? So... This the uh, the RFI was issued in 2018. Um, even years before that, um, Lockheed Martin has had um, a presence in India. Uh, we have we have two very successful joint ventures, as you're likely aware, down in Hyderabad. Um, we've we've had our technical team, our operate production operations team, have boots on the ground visits in over 250 different suppliers and uh, desktop analysis of over 500 suppliers. And I imagine that number would be even greater had we not had the, the pandemic these, this past you know, nearly two years now. So once we get the RFP from a proposal standpoint, I believe that we are very well positioned um, to provide a, a superior Make in India offering, no other company um, uh, you know, compared to Lockheed Martin has had the track record of establishing robust industrial ecosystems 
really around the, the globe from a from a aerospace defense perspective, um, and then from uh, from a life cycle cost, as I had mentioned, uh, from a technical capability, th those um, those those requirements, um, specifically on the technical side, will ensure that we are compliant with the Indian Air Force's requirements. And where does F twenty one fit in in the already existing inventory? You know, F-21, if it comes through the Make in India channel, it should be an asset and it should not be a duplication of existing assets. So where does it fit in where it gets that individual position? So the F-21 truly is a force multiplier for the Indian Air Force uh, from a capability standpoint, and it, it complements both the Tejas and Rafal uh, quite well uh, operationally and, and again from an affordability perspective if you look at the max takeoff weights between both the Tejas as well as the Rafal and the mission profiles for uh, the, the Indian Air Force and other air forces around the world from, from a balanced force structure standpoint the F-21 uh, fits in right in the middle of that so you know we're confident that it's it's right for for India uh, for not just the Indian Air Force, but both from um, an economic as well as a uh, technology and in industrial um, um, development standpoint. Uh, you know, it, it understand that there's a Make in India initiative, uh, which we are fully supportive of, and, and we have a number of projects and uh, ongoing businesses and supply chain sourcing that we can point to as, as true success. And then there's Admanir Nirbar Bharat or Self-Reliant India, and uh, we remain committed um, you know, Lockheed Martin, not just aeronautics, our entire corporation um, in, in fulfilling those objectives from the government of India. And how is F-21 better than its contenders for the, from the Indian point of view? When we take a decision and India wants, by we I mean India, when India wants to decide, what should be that USP where, you know, you say that, oh, we are better than the rest of them. So how is it better than them? I think the the points that Brett has just made about the make in India aspect of F-21 are very important in that regard. Nobody else has the track record that Lockheed Martin does uh, for indigenization of, of fighter aircraft production and partnership uh, with different industries and countries around the world. Uh, we've built the F-16 F in five different countries around the world and delivered hundreds and hundreds of airplanes. Uh, with the F-35, we are now uh, building those aircraft in, in Japan and Italy, as well as the United States. And nobody else has the track record that we do of partnering with local industry to produce uh, locally, uh, locally sourced fighter aircraft. Our partnership with Tata that Brett mentioned has been going on for more than 10 years now. We just had a ceremony down in Hyderabad to celebrate the delivery of the 150th C-130J empennage from our joint venture facility with Tata's. Um, those sorts of relationships, uh, which we start, tend to last for a very, very long time. And, and I don't think you see that with any of the other companies that are in our business. And, uh, that is really what I think India is looking for uh, with the Make in India, with the Self-Reliant India Initiative. And I think we're best positioned to deliver that. And in that case, uh, what would be the percentage of the Indian contained into the aircraft? Approximately. That'll, ult that'll ultimately depend on the requirements that we see in the RFP. Uh, but I can cite the success story that we have on the empennage for the C-130. Uh, when it started out, of course, it was, it was uh, uh, you know, the first time that we built major aerostructures here in India. Uh, this, at this point here, now that we've been 10 years into the process, 85% uh, of that structure, which is the whole tail structure of the C-130, is sourced here in India. It's not something where we're bringing in parts from overseas and just putting them together. Uh, we've developed an ecosystem, as Brett mentioned, of small and medium suppliers that feed up the supply chain to our Tata joint venture. And 85% of that is built here in India. Uh, within the next few years, we intend to increase that to over 95%. And is uh, Lockheed Martin projecting that 
uh, whenever there's a talk with the government? Certainly, uh, that sort of thing tends to increase over time, as it has for the C-130. And we would expect F-21 to be the same way. We would start out with a certain set of things that we would do with our industrial partners. As you know, the first 18 or so aircraft would be uh, delivered from our production facility in Greenville, South Carolina. And then we would transition the production line over to a facility in India, depending on uh, what the requirements of government of India laid out in the RFP are. Over time, the indigenous content of the aircraft that are built here is going to naturally increase. And that's driven by a number of factors. Uh, the capability of Indian industry to absorb the transfer of technology. Uh, it's driven by the relationship between India and the United States with respect to technology transfer and release policies. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, we hope to have a, a very robust indigenous manufacturing and assembly capability for the F-21 here in India, not just with the mate through delivery, but with the supply of components and ultimately the maintenance, repair and overhaul of F-21 here in India. And, Brett, do you uh, have anything to, to add to that? No, you, you said it well, Mike, thank you. And, uh, you know, in continuation to that, uh, there's a life cycle cost to it. So will uh, that, you know, what will, what will that result into, you know, if, uh, how, where will you stand when it comes to budgeting, which is a very major constraint in India and anywhere in the world, I'm sure it would be. So uh, how would you fit that into it? The initial cost of the aircraft, manufacturing of the aircraft, and then the life cycle cost. So how would right. you? Yeah, so, uh we think that that's a very important point. Um, and, and that's something that we've been in, in dialogue with the customer about quite frequently. Uh, ultimately, the life cycle cost is going to come down to is, if, is it part of the evaluation criteria? And we think it should be an important part of that. You know, when you look at the F-21 in particular, um, it's a single engine aircraft. So it, it's lighter, um, it, it, you know, it can go further, uh, stay longer, longer loiter time, deliver more ordnance, all those operational uh, stamp capabilities. But when you look at from an acquisition standpoint, it shouldn't just be on the, the total acquisition or the total program price. It really should account for that life cycle cost because, you know, if it, you I'll use an analogy, you know, if you buy a car that's that's not as reliable, for example, which the F-21 is is quite, quite reliable, um, you're going to be paying for as, as um Mike had mentioned uh, spares, repairs. It's it's not going to be um, you know operationally uh, capable. We call it operational availability, um, and and that's an important factor. So um, you know we we hope that that that's going to be part of the uh, the criteria, and we believe the F twenty one will fare, fare quite well in that respect. Anything to add, Mike? Yeah, I, th I think just to hammer on the point, uh, we're very pleased and very proud of the F-16 family of aircraft and F-21, the life cycle cost story there. As a single engine aircraft, it uses less fuel, it's less expensive, and we have a great track record of supporting and sustaining the aircraft that will only benefit from the make in India aspect that uh, will have partnerships for the program. Uh, the legacy aircraft that you see in the IAF fleet, um, particularly the Russian airplanes, they tend to be very, very uh, cheap to buy, but they're very, very expensive to operate. And we want to break that paradigm and help India have a very affordable, uh, very reliable fighter force structure moving into the future. You know, uh, when we talk about budgets, we also talk about battlefields. And India has a very varied, uh, you know, geographical terrain. So uh, we need an aircraft which will be able to operate from the deserts of Rajasthan. Will also operate in the cold deserts of uh, Kargil and beyond, Leh, Ladakh. And uh, the geopolitical situation requires us to have an aircraft which will be a perfect fit to guard our borders. So uh, how does F-21 fit into that for us? Yeah, so I'll take a step, uh, Mike, unless you want to interject. We, we've done uh, a lot of analysis uh, on the F-21, and as Mike had mentioned, 
um, from our legacy fighters, they, they operate across the world, right? Uh, and in a lot of different terrains, you know, from uh, low altitude, high altitude, similar to, uh, you know, lay, um, that we've proven that the, that the F-21 from, from an operational standpoint in different uh, terrains in uh, different, uh, you know, temperatures, it, it operates quite well. <clears throat> If you look at where the, the military is going, the Indian military from a theaterization standpoint, and again, the F-21 from an affordability and reliability standpoint in that construct, it really fits a theaterization model quite well, again, from a force multiplication. And then when you look at, you mentioned the, the geopolitical front, uh, I mean, it, it's evident over the past you know, two decades that the, that the relationship between the US and India has uh, truly blossomed. It's been quite remarkable from the foundational agreements such as BECA and CAMCASA and the ISA, Industrial Security Annex, from major defense partner, um, the renaming of Indo-PACOM, I could go on and on, all two plus two dialogues, the heads of state. Um, the, the US-India relationship is, is at um, uh, a really great point right now. And, uh, and I expect that fully uh, going forward. And when you look at, from a strategic standpoint, from a military cooperation standpoint, um, fighter aircraft really are strategic in that relationship. And I think that this would just really take, take the US-India partnership for an F-21 US fighter selection to the next level. And certainly from an interoperability standpoint, uh, moving forward from a, uh, uh, from a military standpoint. And what about its, uh, cons the concept of joint operations is setting in in the Indian forces? And uh, how do you think it will be able to perform those joint ops with the Navy and the Army? Yeah, so the F-21 uh, in particular, uh, it has a unique software-defined radio um, that uh, believes by nominated equipment from the government of India that will allow interoperability, not just across different fighter platforms within the Air Force, but also across the services. And when you look at join all the main operations from um, a military strategy going forward and, and across, um, um, across different militaries, for the U.S. In, in this example, the F-21 is, is positioned very well um, to do that. You know, it will take, you know, active and passive sensors um, as well as mission avionics suites and couple onboard and offboard data to share across, uh, you know, platforms, services, as well as militaries. And as we are going to be the first, the first country to have the F-21, in that case, so will in future, if... Uh, uh, now, opportunity comes for some other Air Force to also go in for it. Will the, you decide that the parameters remain the same or are they going to be specific to countries? Those sorts of comm systems are unique for each country and they're specified. However, when countries want to operate together, interoperability, um, that is something that is laid out ahead of time and the communication protocols are put in effect. Uh, we pioneered that with the F-16. We were one of the first uh, fighter aircraft to have a data link uh, as the improved data modem was put into place back in the 1990s. So the ability to talk between air fighter aircraft and between uh, fighter aircraft and other systems, that's something that we have pioneered. Uh, so if India wants to cooperate with other friendly countries, it is something that, that can be put into the system. Uh, but ultimately, it's a national sovereignty issue uh, that if India has a secure communication system like Brett mentioned, uh, that is something that will be put in place for India, but it can be used to interoperate as well. Yeah, and I was just going to say, you know, the F-21 offering, it is unique uh, to India um, or specific for India. We're not offering uh, now nor in the future the F-21 to any other country in the world. Um, again, it's, it's tailored to meet India's unique requirements um, and any uh, future sales um, from India for, for fighter aircraft, every country has, has uh, their own requirements, um, some you know, more specific or unique than others, but uh, there would certainly be opportunities for um, future um, F exports and regional MRO, as, as Mike had mentioned earlier, um, from India. Now, suppose it's only for India, then you'll also require an MRO facility specially for it? 
that'll depend on the requirements as laid out in the RFP. Uh, but fundamentally, once you put the capability to assemble aircraft uh, in a country, you have also the capability to maintain them there. And, and now that you know, we are we just two days away, we are from the Indian Air Force Day. Uh, Mike, would you like to add on to the Lockheed Martin's long standing relationship with India? So it'll be wonderful to hear from you. Yeah, certainly. Uh, we're very proud of our relationship with the IAF. It actually goes back into the 1950s with the original constellation uh, that was put into service, both with, of course, Air India, but then ultimately the Indian Air Force. Uh, I was very proud during my time living in India uh, to have been part of the first major defense deal between the U.S. and India in over 50 years when we brought the C-130J uh, to the Indian Air Force uh, with 77 Squadron. Uh, those aircraft, there's now a fleet of 12 C-130Js that are operational with the IAF, and they have uh, been used by the IAF to accomplish many, many different feats over the years, uh, landing at the highest uh, operational airfield in the Himalayas um, just a few months ago, landing on a national highway in Rajasthan. Um, all of the various humanitarian assistance and disaster relief missions that the IAF has conducted, uh, whenever there's a situation like that, be it a cyclone, be it an earthquake, um, be it COVID, the COVID pandemic response, the IAF is first on the scene with their C-130s. And so we're very, very proud to be part of that relationship with the IAF and help them in all the tremendous accomplishments that they've done. And we look forward to continuing that legacy and partnership with the F-21. Uh, you know, before we uh, you know, uh, put an end to this conversation, I would like to understand one little thing. You know, there are people have been asking us very often, you have a great aircraft in F-35. And, uh, you know, people at all forum will ask you why uh, LM doesn't offer F-35 to India. Is there a reason to it? I'm sure Mike will be able to tell us. Well, the uh, determination of what aircraft are offered is made by the US government. And uh, that decision in terms of whether India is going to ask for or be offered the F-35, that's a subject between the two governments. Uh, we've developed the F-21 because it meets the requirements that the Indian Air Force has laid out for MRFA as we know them today. And we think that that's the best solution right now to meet those requirements in the most affordable fashion and meeting the objectives of Make in India and self-reliant India uh, in terms of the industrial policy. So it's, it's a combination of different things that makes the F-21 the best solution there. And Brett, since you are in India for the campaign, uh, I think we can uh, have the last word from you. Uh, how does it feel to be here for a campaign which has been so long standing? And uh, has it given you more time to understand the requirement? Has it given you more time to actually zero out on things which uh, you, know, you feel would be absolutely tailor made for India? And are you ready for another wait, you know, for two, three years, four years, whatever? Oh, I appreciate that question. I would say um, <clears throat> with all good things comes patience. Um, and that's you know, certainly the, the case uh, with the campaign here. Um, no, uh, to, your, to your point, um, I, I think the, the additional time um, has, has really allowed us, as I had mentioned before, to engage Indian industry, to engage the customer in really robust uh, uh, fashions in order to lay out a detailed uh, program plan Again, based off of, I'd say, the informal requirements, again, as we understand them today, those will be specified in a future RFP. But I think the important thing is, as we had mentioned earlier, our track record of establishing robust industrial ecosystems, performing on the, the, the contracts and programs that we win, it's positioning us to be successful uh, if and when the F-21 is ultimately selected. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you so much, Brett. It was wonderful to have you both at the show with us. Hope to have you again when we are nearer, you know, the RFP having come out and then we're again, you know, trying to talk to you about what is going to happen now. So we are just looking forward to you coming again to our show. 
Hope to see you again, guys. Goodbye. Bye. And we hand over the pleasure. We hand over now to Shatali, who's very patiently waiting in Cyprus for us to finish. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you so much, Brett. It was nice hearing to you both and uh, hope to meet you both soon in any of the shows nearby. So, so Dubai Air Show. Yeah, Dubai Air Show right. is coming up. We will be there and hope to see you both also there. Thank we'll have a much. discussion on the F-21 there also. Yes. Thank Bye. you so Bye. much. Bye. Have a great day Thank ahead. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.